possible. Right, so first things first, we are going to look at the same kind of stuff we looked at last time, and that is just why, what's the point of the content landing page? Because the content landing page is quite similar to a Bitmoji classroom. It really is. It has a lot of similarities to it. Um, in that our fundamental question is, we are trying to make sure that our learners are able to access certain links. So we want this learner to be able to get to that link without having an incredibly difficult time having to type things in, right? So that's essentially our goal. Now, obviously, the intention is to have all of them get to the same link. So there's a number of different ways that we can do this, right? So we've we've used, um, and if you've been to any of our other sessions, and I think in general, everyone's kind of gotten used to these things by now. We use Bitmojis for a lot of, not Bitmojis, we use Bitlies for a lot of things, right? Because a Bitly is, a, is an easy way to kind of get people onto a resource. The simple fact is, um, let's take the, 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 the form that you just completed, if you just completed the, um, if you completed the actual, um, the attendance register form, where we've got a very short Bitmoji that, um, that you were able to, or that we often give people that they can just copy and paste. Alternatively, if I weren't to give them that Bitmoji, I would have to give them this link. Now, there's no way on planet Earth anyone is going to type that accurately, nor are you as a teacher going to go and write that out on a board or anything like that. Maybe you can put it still. We've got the option of using Bitmojis and transforming our links into something, or bitlies at least, and transforming it into something that looks like that, right? So this is why we use a bitly. It's it's easier to type if they have to type it, um, and it's so it makes it a lot easier for people to actually get to longer links. This is why bitly becomes useful. So instead of them having to go straight to that, they all go to the bitly, and the bitly will take me to the website that I need to go to. Now, whether this website is a YouTube video, whether this website is a Google form, whether this website is a link to a quizzes activity or a Quizlet activity, it's just easier for them to have to go to the bit.ly because the bit.ly shortens it for us. On that note, something entirely different that I've picked up a lot, um, the use of QR codes. Now, a QR code is, is another tool that's essentially going to do the same thing for me because um, the QR code will also be a link, will also take me straight there. So I could have them use QR codes. And a lot of people are confused as to when do I actually use a QR code? When do I use a bit.ly? When do I just use the link as is? Um, because that's also sometimes a very useful thing to do. And Um, we'll get to the, 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 the Google Drive thing in a second, Renee. Um, but a lot of people ask, when on when do I need to use which one? When should I use a QR code? When should, should I use a bit.ly? Well, a QR code, you have to understand the function of a QR code. The function of a QR code is someone needs to physically be able to scan it. So QR codes are great in a classroom context because if you're in a classroom where learners have mobile devices, Putting up a QR code, having them scan it is a great way of them getting to wherever you want them to go to. So, um, for example, if you're in a class in your classroom, if you've got a a classroom website, having a permanent little poster with a QR code on there that the kids can walk in and then just scan that QR code. We'll get to that in a, a, a bit later. Is a great way of making sure they get to wherever you want them to get to. Um, Bitly's, but a QR code. If you're going to send someone an email with a QR code, it doesn't really make that much sense because then you might as well just have made a clickable link because that's what people will want to do. If you send them an email with a QR code, the expectation is they need to somehow scan that. So they need to open it on their computer and then scan it with their mobile device. Whereas the question is, why didn't you just give them a link that they could click on to go straight into it? So it's an important question and an important distinction to make is when do we use QR codes? When do we use bitlies? Um, we have a whole training session on QR codes and bitlies. We've done sessions about that in the past. So you're welcome to go and have a look at that. 
The question that Renee asked about having to put things on Google Drive, not at all. Bitly has absolutely no affiliation with Google in any way, shape, or form. So literally any website that you're using, anything that is a link, can be transformed into a shortened link using Bitly or a QR code. So Google Drive has nothing to do with it. The only reason we are looking at the Google thing now is that was the first example that jumped into mind, the, the Google form that you complete. Even there's a shortened form version of it. For us, it's just easier because people can type that and people can remember that. And we try and create a, a familiarity that people know this is the thing that we type in to get to a certain place. Um, <clears throat> so, so no, you don't have to put anything onto Google Drive, OneDrive, or anything specific. You can just put it anywhere that you want to. Now, the thing about the Bitly that is the limitation of the Bitly is the Bitly can only link to one thing. A Bitly can't link to multiple things. Now, the more and more that you start integrating technology into your classroom, it's fine having this one-off um, example where I'm going to use, I want my kids to go to this website. I'm going to create a Bitly. They're going to type it and they're going to go to that website. But what happens if you start using more things? Now you want them to go and read that website, but afterwards you want them to go fill in a form. Or if we want to step away from the Google thing for a second, you want them to go and complete a quizzes. Or you want them to go and watch a video as well. Now, suddenly this becomes a problem because that bit.ly can't link to my other links. So my other option is if I'm using bit.ly's is I can go and have multiple bit.ly's. And let's just add a couple more. So there's another one and there's another one. But again, my problem is I'm faced with the same issue that I'm, I'm, I'm still faced with that issue of that one bitly is not going to link to my other bitlies. And this is where we get to the content landing page. Now, the, the, the Bitmoji classroom that we did last week is a similar concept to the content landing page. They, they are just kind of different ways of essentially being able to achieve the same thing. So... Again, our pathway here is a nightmare because then I've got my one bitly and this kid needs to go to that bitly again to get there, but he also needs to go to this one and he also needs to go to this one. And just as this spider web is going to become a messy thing, it just is, well, it becomes a mess. Simple as that. Now, I think one of the easiest ways to really illustrate that for me is if you think back to early in the pandemic, and I'm sure this happened to many teachers, we were all scrambling to get digital resources. We were all trying to figure out where's the best place on the internet that we can get things. And maybe you were diligent. Maybe you made a list of all those millions and millions and millions of links that were sent to you. But if you're like most teachers, and my, I include myself in that group, um, <coughs> I certainly didn't make a list of these things. I just had a look. I just When a link came through, I clicked on it. I had a quick look. I thought, hmm, this looks interesting. I closed it and I forgot about it. And, and I've never been able to go back to it since. Now, therein lies the problem. A lot of us end up using WhatsApp as, as, a, as a communication tool because it's a, something that's familiar to us. But the problem is WhatsApp has been designed as a linear communication tool. And, and what I mean by that is the latest stuff will be there, but scrolling back and going back into the archives is pretty tricky. You can store messages, you can save messages, you can search for things. I know it's got a lot of functions like that, but if we're going to be completely honest with each other, WhatsApp is something that goes in, it gets, it goes. Now the problem is six months later, how do we get to these things? How do we access these things? And that's where it becomes important to start organizing and categorizing stuff. Now, I'm getting a little bit off track here because the content landing page that we really want to look at today does not necessarily have anything to do with that. But the but you can evolve your content landing page concept into a into a website that you have that you host your content on for your learners, a, a subject specific website as an example. So we are still probably going to use a bit a bitly because a bitly is undoubtedly a useful thing. But rather than having to go into but what we want to do is we want to organize these things into one centralized place. Right, so for, the, for that, 
what we're going to end up using is we're going to end up using Google Sites. Now, the only reason why we use Google Sites is not because it's a powerful tool, not because of its the fact that it's very feature rich, because it is so straightforward and simple, because it is not such a powerful tool. If I act, if I compare it to something like Wix or Weebly or um, there's a whole bunch of them out there, it isn't as powerful as those. Those definitely have more functions. But now, but but Google Sites has a simplicity to to it that makes it easy and quick to use, which is what which is one of the things that's great about it, um, or something that I really like about it. But remember, the concept of what we're talking about today is completely transferable to any platform. Um, what what we're looking at now, and it's, I really want to stress that it is not a platform specific thing. You can do this on any platform. You can use any kind of site building tool to do this. But essentially what our goal is, is we want our learners to go to one central place. And that central place needs to be a break. Well, that bit.ly that they're going to be using is going to take them to this landing page. And from that landing page, they can then access their resources. The one thing that is very different from this one, when we talk about our content landing page, the 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 the, the intention behind is in, and and something that I spoke about is why this is a great thing for for um, you to use in a um, in a computer lab centralized landing page that you use in that in that environment. What I mean by that is a lot of our currently a lot of our labs are using, for example, green shoots. And they, or they might be using um, reading eggs is another one. Some of them might be using the foundation phase site. And the reality is there are going to be more things that will come up pretty soon. More and more things will get added to that group of sites that you would like to visit. Now, what we want to do is we want to control the flow of access. Let me give you an example. So when learners come into a, a computer lab, what happens is they open up a new tab. Here we go. Now we want them to get to, we need to get them onto green shoots as an example. So they might be used to something that's going to get them there quickly. Let's say we're going to type in green shoots, right? So now we're going to type in green shoots and now I'm looking at this, I'm looking at this. I'm going to click on the first one. So when I click on the first thing, because we're kind of programmed to do that and I get here, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. This is not what I'm supposed to do. Now I raise my hand, I ask the teacher, but this isn't the right place to go to. Soon enough, they'll get used to the fact that that's not where they're supposed to go. They're actually supposed to go to the login process. And here we go there, and then we go to MCO, and then they get there. Now, the reality is, let me just quickly go out of full screen mode here. The reality is there is a different link. That is the link we want them to get to. Imagine when they open a new tab, this isn't what they see. What they see is one link that says green shoots, one link that, that says reading eggs, one link that says foundation phase, or maybe it could be something else, whatever the case might be. That's kind of what we're getting to when we talk about a content landing page, is that we replace this screen that you see over here, our default new tab in Google Chrome, we replace it with a school specific page where learners don't open up this. Because the simple fact is, as great as Google is, getting our kids to open up a tab and seeing this in front of them makes them want to do something else. It's the same concept of taking them into YouTube and asking them to go search for videos there. The minute that they go and search for things there, then immediately the opportunity exists to go off on a tangent and do something else. So our idea of a content landing page is to control that flow of information. Another thing that we spoke about last time, again, if we take the green, the, the, that, that green shoots example that we just did, what we actually ended up on, we had to open a new tab. After that, we had to search for something and that actually opened up a window. After searching for that window, we opened up the green shoots website. Then we clicked on another tab and then we clicked on another tab. So I've actually gone through five steps to get to that process. I know there are other ways that, that, that people are already doing um, that where they are, for example, creating a shortcut on the desktop. So the shortcut, they click on the shortcut and the shortcut takes them straight 
two green shoots, and that of course works as well. But there's one thing that you have to that that, that we, we need to keep in mind with our landing page. And what's great about the concept of the landing page is if things need to change. So let's say for argument's sake, we have, I'm just going to take these things away quickly. I'm just going to give them the links that they've got over here. So here we've got MCO. Um, let's just make this nice and big so everyone can see what we're talking about. Right, so there we've got MCO as our one link. We've got reading eggs as another one. And don't worry if things that I'm talking about now are confusing you and you're not sure what on earth is reading eggs and what what's MCO and all those things. That's not the point we're trying to make. Um, and then over here, you have the foundation phase site. Right, so there are your three big links that you have on your site. Now, one major advantage that you have, and of course, what a lot of schools, and I've seen this happen quite a lot, what school, schools are doing is they're taking these three and then making shortcuts on the desktops of the computers in the lab. Great, it makes it easy for kids to access. But what happens now if I've got a survey that I want all the kids to complete? I can't, I don't have this. I've got my shortcuts, remember? So the great thing is once I've got this landing page and I've got this flow happening, I can easily go and add my survey, a link to the survey on this landing page. So there's no complicated explanation for the kids getting anywhere. They walk into the lab. They open up Google Chrome. It automatically goes to the landing page. On that landing page, they've got the same things that they had. All of these things are on there. But the big thing is now there's something new. There's a survey that they can complete. Or you can include links. There's a survey for the grade ones, for the grade twos, for the grade threes, whatever the case might be. Maybe you discover, but I want to actually add something else. Now we're going to add um, code org as an option for my younger learners right so code.org needs to be on there we spoke about code.org when we spoke about the um you have to follow something like seven clicks to actually get to where you really start doing something but now instead of having to worry about making one making a shortcut on 20 30 40 computers i add one link to one website and it's automatically added to everyone's access that's the idea of the landing page that we're talking about. Well, that's one of the ideas. That's our primary goal that we're looking at today, creating the single landing page that becomes the central access point. And again, it's great because it's not a static thing. It's a dynamic thing um, that can be updated. Imagine, I know what, what, what people are doing quite a lot these days is they're sending out PDFs with clickable links. Now imagine that PDF wasn't a PDF and that PDF was a website. And that website was updated once a week, once every two weeks, once every three or four weeks. It's the same principle as the Bitmoji Classroom. The great thing is it's the same one. I'm not sending out new links the whole time. Everyone has the one link, and that one link gets you wherever you need to go. And the great thing about all of these things that we're talking about, none of it costs a cent. Um, it's very important to understand that. You don't have to pay at all when you do this. You can have a domain and link these things to your domain, but that really, really isn't necessary. You can just create a, a Google site that's not linked to a domain. You don't need a Google workspace. Anyone can do this. It is perfectly free. So let's have a look at what we mean when we want to do this. So let's jump into Google Sites now. Getting to Google Sites, you can get to Google Sites through your, let's just zoom in a little bit. Right, so you've got the waffle over here. Google Sites will be one of the links, um, one of your options in the waffle. Alternatively, and this is how I get into it, sites.google.com will get you into Google Sites. Right, so here we are on Google Sites. You can see I've got a couple of Google Sites over here that we use. I'm going to show you one or two of them a little bit later maybe. Right, so um, very good question, Renee. If it is a site that has a login let's take something like um like google classroom is, is a good example if it requires a login you, they won't be able to go straight into this into the space where you want them to then you need to go to that first page that is the login page for them to have access remember we're trying to kind of 
generalize this. It's the, it depends a lot on how these computers are set up. If each comp computer is set up for each individual user, then they could technically be logged into their Google Chrome, um, in, into their Google Chrome, which would then remember their login credentials and they could go in automatically. But that is a considerably harder setup to ha to have. If it's on a if it's on on a personal device, so if if you're in a position where the learners are using their mobile devices, then your mobile device will remember your login credentials. So your mobile device will remember if I click on this link, these are my this is the kids' login credentials, and they will automatically be logged in. Something like Green Shoots that requires a login, you'll have to go to this login login page in order for them to log in. Um, it won't just remember the user details, except again, if it's been set up to remember the user details. Um, but again, that's a little bit more complicated to do. <clears throat> so when we're in Google, when we're in Google sites like this, as you can see now, um, this is just our basic, our basic constructing point where we want to go into. Now, when we're building these landing pages, I actually suggest that we try and avoid avoid using these pages at all, right? So we're not actually going to be using pages at all. We want to do everything on the landing page, the home page. Once this thing grows in complexity, yes, yeah, sure, then you can start differentiating. If you want to differentiate between your grades, that's fine. You can do it like that as well. It's also another way of doing it. But remember our whole idea behind this landing page, everything goes back to the whole idea of it needs to be simple, right? It needs to be easy. Everything about this is about the simplification of getting to things. Uh, to just to give you a story of why I saw something like this can be so useful is I, I went to a school to go see what they're doing with their coding and robotics and the learners got into the classroom and it took somewhere between five to 10 minutes for them just to get to the CS first page where they could start. I think it took about 15 minutes for every single learner. The ones that understood where they needed to go to, they were they got there within under five minutes. But then there were other learners who were a little bit confused where they need to click, where they need to go. So the teacher had to go and help them. Okay, remember we need to click on that, go there, go click on this, go click on that, go click on that. And I just realized that if we have something like this, where the kids are not going and having this as their starting point, but they can go to a landing page. We just speed up the whole process and we give ourselves great options as well. Right. So we're going to do a very simple one here. And I'm going to do during the course of this, you're welcome to kind of build and work on your own one at the same time. Um, but remember, we are doing a tech hour, so it is more of a demonstration with the intention that you can go back and rewatch it. So if you're going to be re-watching this video, just keep in mind at about 30 minutes, that's when we start with a practical demonstration. So we start with this little header over here. I often actually delete the header because the header forces me to do certain things that I don't always, always necessarily want to do it like that. But at the same time, it is a good starting point to just have a header like that. We go to our themes. Here you've got a number of different themes that you can use. You can actually just customize your own theme and create something that you feel comfortable with. This is a new thing that wasn't there for a long time. They used to be very, very, very rigid in your options that you had, but now they're adding a couple nice new things. So let's say you like this one. We're just going to keep this one and we're just going to call this your school. Right. So there's your school, whatever your school might be. Now, it is usually nice to have your school um, logo in here. So let's go and find your school, your school logo quickly by inserting an image. So inserting, when we look at the insert options, there are four basic insert options, text, images, and something from Drive. Remember, this is a Google product. So if your things are on Google Drive, it syncs very, very well. It's very happy to work with its own product. And that includes, of course, YouTube. So there we've got our basic inserts. We've got our layouts over here. Um, we are first just going to have a look at what we – that one's not going to work. Um, we're first just going to have a look at what these do for us, and then we'll have a look at these layouts as well, and then we'll get to some of these more advanced options in a bit. And remember, we're going to keep it very basic for this. So we just want to insert an image now. So if we click on images, 
you get two options. You can either upload or you can select. When you select an image, it opens up this dialog, right? The typical dialog when you add images. So it'll always give you the option to add from Google Drive. It's going to give you the option to add by URL. It gives you the option to do a Google image search. So you can see a couple of things that I've got on, on my um, Google Drive. Not a lot. I actually don't put a lot of images on there. You can have things on photos. So what are the quickest ways of just getting things in there is using Google image search. Because when, when we use Google image search like this, there's a couple of very important useful things that happen here. Firstly, it's going to find images that are free to use. And I think it's something that, that we need to become a bit more mindful of, of, of just going onto Google and searching for images and finding something and then just kind of being okay with there being watermarks, et cetera, on it. We, we need to become a little bit more aware of that and avoid that, th that we are using things with watermarks. There's a reason why they watermarks on there, and that's because you're supposed to pay money for them and using them isn't fair. Right. Um, I saw there was a very quick little hand up there and then it disappeared again. Okay, just ask in the, in the chat. I'll get to that question later then. Right, so um, when we use things from Google Image Search, we're actually using images that are free to use and that won't, that won't come up with all sorts of different things. So I'm going to go search for my school logo and unfortunately what I can guarantee you is you won't find your school logo using Google Image Search, or not guarantee you, but it's unlikely because you need to set certain things for Google Image Search to find your photo either. So it might not find your photo at all. So you will probably have to go through the old traditional way of finding of finding a photo. So let's just use this brand new school because that feels like an appropriate one. I'm just going to insert that image. So when I insert an image, it's just going to put it over here, this brand new school. Can you see there I've got my brand new school? Right? Is anyone else struggling with the with the image with the um, picture or the feed the video? I see Elena's having troubles with her. I'm just going to. I forgot to turn on my bigger cursor. Okay, um, Elena, it might be that that it's an internet thing. Just try and re rejoining the session again. See if that fixes the problem. Right, now I'm going to show you a cool little trick. I need to find this brand new school logo. Um, I know I'm doing exactly what cool for it. And we'll go to images. There is the image that I'm looking for. Now, what I want to show you, and this is just a very nifty little trick that that um, I've come to use quite a bit. The This brand new school logo or this image that I have over here, it doesn't have a transparent background. And that is a problem because if I look at my website that I'm building, where's my website now? My website that I'm building, I don't know if you can see it very clearly. Let me just change this so you can see it clearly. There I've got a, I've got that color and now I'm adding this and I've got this white frame around it. And my plan is to actually go and put this image over here. And now that white frame is a problem. So how do I remove these backgrounds? An easy way, I'm gonna show you one of the easiest ways that you can do this. So I can take this, right click on this and copy the image address. Now, as luck would have it, this is one of, going to be one of those images where it doesn't work, but it normally works. Then there's a website, I'll paste the link in the chat as well, remove.bg. Right, so, um, Is the link in the in the chat as well. So remove the PG. You can upload images and it'll try and remove your background. But what it can also do is it can just if I just paste here, if I just paste the the, the link, it goes and fetches it online and it gets that image. And there we go. You can see those little blocks. It's removed the background. So now I can go and I can just download it. I've downloaded my image. You'll see it is available here at the bottom, and I'll just drag it in. And there, suddenly, it's not playing along now. Here we go. There we go. Now I've got my logo without a background anymore. So a very cool little trick that you can use. I see I pasted it in there by accident. Um, a very, a very cool trick that you can use to just remove backgrounds from images 
And that ends up being a very useful thing to do, especially when you're kind of building your sites and you want to make the thing look nice and the, and, and those backgrounds it, it, it can become a little bit annoying. Remove.bg. Now, be mindful. I know that I found this image on Google Image Search, so it is technically one of those things that's licensable. I can use it. Now, we're going to call our school. Because I've got my name included here, I, you can also have it, options like cropping it. So maybe we'll just crop that. Um, we'll just try and crop out the the brand new bit. And one thing I can tell you now, the image crop tool in sites is not always as nice as we as nice as you would want it to be. It is one of those limitations. But there we go. We've cropped out the name. I've got your school, and there I've got my logo, and it's looking pretty not so great. But anyway, um, we'll just leave it like that for now. Now we need to get to the actual content part of it, and the content part of it um, is when we when we just start adding the links that you want to add. So you can obviously now go and say add the text box. So if I just click text box, it'll create a new text box for me here. I'll make my first one green shoots, and I can have a second text box if I want to. And I call my second text box. I'll call um, what were the other ones that we spoke about now? Uh, foundation, uh, reading eggs. And I have third one that I call the foundation phase. Right. I could do it like this and just go take these things and make it look a little bit nicer. Um, and then leave it like that as my website and then make sure that these are links. So just to show you how you can select text and turn it into a link, if I select the text, you select it, and then there's the link icon, insert link. So now when I insert link, I know that I can take them straight to, not to that, but I'll take them straight to this link that I want them to get to. And I'll just paste that, and there we go. Now it is a link, and again, if, you, if you're worried, they're not gonna see that that's a link, Let's make it a little bit bigger and we'll just make it blue. Most people realize if it's blue, it must truly really be a link. Right, so there's my one link. Not looking great. We want to make it look a little bit better still, but it's a start, right? Let's just do that for all the others as well. We'll, just to make things easy, I'm just going to show you how we can do this as well. If you're happy with the look of one of them, you can, of course, go and just enter and add more to the bottom here, just a normal link like that. Or if you are happy with with that and you want to copy the element. So let me explain how that works. Google Sites works in blocks. So we've got one block here at the top. This is our, our, our first block. Now we've got one block here, right? You can see that is the block that I'm moving around. Um, so every time I add a new block, Everything has to basically, the reason why it works in these blocks is everything essentially, every block needs to fill up that space, right? So it, we've got a whole bunch of blocks that are going, going to stack on top of each other. Inside of those blocks, every block itself, let's use this, every block itself has the option to have, to be sorted into different columns. <clears throat> so you can sort things into different columns. So let me show you quickly. If I take this block, the text block, for example, and I resize it, I am sort it into that tiny little column there. Or I can resort it and it goes and it becomes that column there. Everything I add will now have to kind of fall into that same, will we'll, we'll link up with this. So I can't it does limit the kind of organization that I can have of things. I can't st stack certain. So just to give you an idea, if I've got a new block, just quickly take the text away. Um, I'm just going to trans take make this yellow so you can see. And now this doesn't want to be white anymore. Anyway, um, so I can take this block. I can put it next to it so it can fill up that space. But I can't now t create a new block That'll, that'll essentially be filling up all of the space under it. So I can either add it to that one at the bottom or I can latch it onto this one, but it, it isn't, it, I can't stretch it across. If I want to stretch it across, what I actually do is 
this is going to be my one section. And this will be my second section. So if I wanted to stretch it across, I would add a block into an entirely new section. Right, sorry, the, the, the text or the annotate.net is moving a little bit, struggling to uh, keep up with this thing when I add new sections. Um, so there I've got my one section and there I've got my second section. Right, so just keep that in mind when we're building this. So often the best, again, the best is to keep it nice and simple and to just get things organized and sorted and put into place. <coughs> Excuse me. And that is why we use these layouts. So each one of these layouts is going to add a new section using that custom layout for that it's going to create for you. Right. So every one of so each one of them, there are six different custom layouts that we can use. And they're quite useful actually using these custom layouts. I it, it just makes the whole design process so much quicker. So let's just remove these and we're going to start with a custom layout. Now the first question you ask yourself is quite simple is how many links do I want to have my learners use? Mo many schools might only use two, many schools might use three, maybe you've even got four links. Let's just link option and we'll create this custom template. Now you'll see it does a lot of the legwork for me because now I can just say click to add text, click to add text, click to add text, some description at the bottom and I can just plus and I can add the images that I want. So we'll do the same thing that we did. So we've got green shoots. And we're going to have reading eggs as we had and we'll have foundation. OK, we're going to run out of space there, right? So there I've got my three links that I want. I can add a description here at the bottom if I want to, or I can just take that away because the kids will probably know what we're talking about. Right, so we'll take those away. Now we need to add images to them. So let's just go and see if we can add an image. If we say plus, it opens up this quick little selector where I can either upload an image, select an image, um, add something from Drive, add a YouTube video, calendar if you wanted to, map, these aren't relevant this time. So we'll go back to select an image. I'm just going to go and make my life easy. Go to Google image search and search for maths because I'm sure I'll find a lot of things. So there's a bunch of different maths related things. I like this one. I'll click it. I'll say insert. And there I've got my quick and easy green shoots logo. So we'll do the same thing for reading. Let's go and search for something. Um, select image. Google image search. Now we're looking for reading. And we'll find. Let's just say that looks like a nice image and we'll say insert. <clears throat> so there we've got an image for my green shoots. We've got one for reading. Now when we get to foundation phase, let's say we actually want to want to use an image on the foundation phase website. So we'll just go to that foundation phase website quickly. Right, so yeah, I'm on the foundation phase website and I can use this top banner. I think it's going to copy and paste a little bit. It's not going to be that easy to copy and paste. So for this one, let's use a different way of getting to it. We're going to use the snipping tool. So if you don't know the snipping tool, you're also not going to see the snipping tool now. But um, the snipping tool is, is, is some of the, one of those things that a lot of people use um, to get content. I'm just going to just do it in the background quickly. <coughs> Excuse me. So here I go. I'll snip a little image. I've got it. I'll copy it. I know you can't see what I'm doing now because I'm not sharing my entire screen. So there's my foundation face side. Now, if I've added an image and I haven't added it on that plus, it's not a problem. You just click and drag it into that and it'll <coughs> add it into, into that um, space. Excuse my. Right, and there we've got our basic landing page sorted out. We we'll want to sort this out, obviously, because it doesn't look great at the moment. I'll be honest. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to take that one and move it here to the bottom. And I'm just going to scrap this header entirely because it doesn't look good. We'll just add a new thing here at the top and we'll insert a new text box and we're just going to call it <coughs> brand new school. Brand new school. 
and I'll add it to the side. So just on why it has that weird um, uh, kind of background now there, the white background, it's part of this theme. This theme puts everything in a little white block, as you can see. So I can change it up, and there I've got my brand new school. Let's make this a slightly nicer font. Um, we'll see now why we want to spend a bit more time making it look a little bit better. I'll change that to 36, so that's a little bit small. Let's make it 60. Right, and just add an enter at the top, and then it lines up nicely. So there I've got brand new school, and you have got my three links. But at this point in time, it doesn't actually do anything yet, because none of it is a link yet. So now we just click on the screen shoots, click on the image, and you'll see that link icon appears. Link, we're going to go take our link that we've got over here. We're just going to add it there. Our reading eggs, I don't have a link for reading eggs now. I'm not going to go and get that link now. I'm just going to take that one and put it in here. Just a tip, what I've also found in general, when you add links, now there's a, <clears throat> there is a bit.ly link that we usually use to get to the site, um, but it is better if you're going to add a link, a direct link, not to use the bit.ly, but to use the actual long link. The reason why is sometimes when you use bit.ly links, you'll see those, and, and I'm sure you've come across that, um, there's a thing that pops open that says, do you have permission to go to that site? That kind of thing. And th that sometimes happens when you use link redirects, like a bit.ly as an example. So I can, if I want to, I can ma make the, the green shoots that itself a link as well, but I'm going to keep it nice and simple. So just to show you what this actually would look like and why it's useful to then go and preview it as well, there's a preview button. So there's a preview button. Let's click on the preview button and take that away. And you'll see now when they open it up on a computer, this is the where they will get to. This is what it looks like, right? So from there, they just click on the one link and they go straight into it. It's not going to work now because I'm in the preview mode, but they just click on something and they go straight into that. Well, it, it does actually go somewhere. Um, sorry. So it's nice to see this. This is on a this is on a on a computer, on a tablet, and that's why this works so well because it scales incredibly well on a tablet and on a mobile device. They can even do that on a mobile device, and they've got it, and it looks something like that. So it becomes an easy way for them to access multiple resources, to access these, these, these different activities that they need to access on a single device. Now, once I've got this in place, and this is why these landing pages are pretty cool. If I've finished my landing page, remember you have to publish it. Um, if I pu click on publish, I just want to show you what, what we can do with this as well, which makes it quite useful. Um, if you publish your site, you give it an, a name, so I'm going to call this example landing page, right? There we go, the example landing page. And then if you are working on a Google workspace, you can restrict who has access to your website. So if I click on manage there, um, just like any kind of Google file, or any Google file that you have, you can, you can change who accesses, who can actually access these things, right? So... I can say in this instance, it's been restricted to the published site is only accessible to the Western Cape Education Department. So in that way, on a Google Workspace, you can restrict that your page is only accessible to people from your school, that no one else has access to it, which again is great when you're starting to add links to it that are actually supposed to be private and used for internal usage. It limits the access to it. You can't do that kind of thing on a normal website that you just open up, um, that you're going to just add, like you build a, no a website normally. It's a lot harder to restrict access. So yeah, it's an easy way to restrict access, but I know a lot of schools don't have um, these Google work. And then access this site, and it becomes an easy one to access for anyone. So there we go. We've got our site. I'm going to publish it quickly. Right, so now that my site has been published, I can view it. Let's click on the view, and it'll take me to my site. This is my site. Now you can see everything is on here that I want to access. Now, when we want to get to our landing page concept, let me show you how we do that. So once we are in Google Chrome or 
or you might be using um, Microsoft Edge or any web browser. All of them have the same function. They all just do it slightly differently. We'll go into the settings. So the three dots and I'll go into settings. And here I'm on my Chrome settings. Um, yeah, I can't use my annotate.net anymore, so I won't be able to write, but let me just zoom in a little bit. And all that you're looking for is you're looking for that button on startup. So on startup, I'm actually going to say open a specific set of pages, and that is the page that I'm going to open. Right, I can't go and close things now and show you what it looks like because then my screen share would go away. Um, but that means that whenever anyone opens up Google Chrome, they're not going to open up with a default new tab they will open up and they will go straight into that website, right? They'll go straight to this. This is now, but this is now my new home page. So the nice thing is, once you've gone through the process of setting this up as your home page on your different devices, the great thing now is, when I go back to the editing of this thing, so I'm just going to close that quickly. So now I go and edit it, and I realize, wait, but there's an important um, there's an important thing that the learners need to complete. There's, there might be an important form that they need to complete. So now we go and we go add that form to the site. So it's just going to search. I've got hundreds of forms over here. Um, let's just use this one as an example. When I insert a form, scrolling down to Google Forms, and you should, I'm not going to go through every single little detail here. Um, because it's something that you can go and play around with and 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 see what is what's included in there. But in this instance, what I do is I actually go and include a form into this. So the great thing is now on this end, oh yeah, that change immediately. You need to first go and publish a your site. It doesn't automatically happen. It gives you time to build in the background. And once you're happy with what you've built, then you publish it and only then does it go live. So now I'm going to go and publish it. And when I'm on this end, if I refresh my site, suddenly I'm using the same landing page, but it will now just update a little bit slowly, it seems. I might, there we go. So there's the form that's included. I haven't gone and run around to all the different computers and changed anything, created new shortcut links. I didn't have to go and um, send them a bit.ly that they all try and type and make mistakes with. There's no QR code that needs to be scanned. They go straight to this. And I make changes in one centralized place and the access is easy for everyone to get to. I don't need to send links via WhatsApp. I don't need to send links via Google Classroom. I just go and make one update in one central place and everyone gets it. So that's the key thing about this landing page concept is that access is the, the whole idea of access. You just go back to what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to build something where we don't have to go and give them these different links. We don't have to expect them to go and click through seven, eight different links to get to the code.org thing that we want them to. We give them the final link where they're supposed to be. We also, when we realize we're done with code.org, we actually are getting a little bit tired of it Code.org has now become um, a little bit easy for my learners as an example. Then we can easily say, okay, the code.org link is now going to go away. We're going to replace it with CS first. Or we're going to add a different option. We're going to add code combat as another cool little thing that they can do. So I hope you understand the, the principle behind this, the reason why we, we want to do something like this. So that's kind of what we can do with our with our landing pages. Now, just to show you very quickly, because that's kind of where we want to, where I'm going to stop now without trying to confuse you too much. The what we really want you to try and do is is build that central landing page that you can use first in your computer labs, but you can use it for a number of other things as well. So here's a here's a nice example. Um, of how I used it the other day I had a presentation. <clears throat> so what in during that presentation, I had four different activities that I wanted the participants to to actually um, to 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 do during that session. And rather than having him scan four different or asking him to go and enter the 
So I'm just going through this route because this is going to be the easiest way to get to the site itself. Rather than having them scan four different QR codes or have to go to four different places to get somewhere, we just created a single landing page. So they had one QR code to scan and that QR code took them here where they've got the first activity, second activity, third activity and a bonus activity. And just to show you, so this was obviously what it would look like on a computer. They weren't on a computer. They were they were accessing it via their mobile devices. So again, this thing scales very well, and there I've got my mobile device. So again, I'm giving them one link, and it's a quick access to these four things. And this took about five minutes to put together because it is such a simple system, and especially once you start working with it a little bit more. Um, the final thing that I want that I want to add as well is we when i look at the images that i've used on this example every single image that i used was sourced from a place where you can use it free to use images essentially so this one for example that i used over here this comes from a website called free pick right so free pick it is a it really is a great a great site where you can get free resources um, for your free free resources for your design and development. Sometimes you need to download it. Sometimes you can just copy and paste it. However, what they do ask is that you add some kind of um, acknowledgement. So I often talk about the fact that I'm using their things, or I'll just acknowledge them in in some different way. On the websites that we build, we always say these um, the images are or the the website is powered using free pick images. And the other one we use a lot for activities is if I scroll down to all of these icons, really every single one that you see over here. So that icon and this icon, these are all sourced from the website flat icon, right? So those two websites. Right, and I'm writing with a mouse, so it's something that I'm realizing it's a skill you can develop and slowly but surely get better at. Um, so flat icon is the is the website that I use to source those images. So when we do these things, let's try and be responsible about how we source our images, how we get them, um, where we get them from, and then use use these images and then just add a little footer in your website. So when you're building on your you're building your website, um, did I close the other one out? Yes, I closed it. But when you're building your website, just to show you here, if I'm here right at the bottom, we can just add a little footer where we just acknowledge the fact that the resources on this website are sourced from the following are sourced from the following pages, um, just to give them that kind of recognition. So I hope this in combination with a with a bitmoji because the bitmoji classroom that a lot of you attended is often something i feel that is really appropriate to your younger learners but your older learners might be more comfortable with this doing something like that having having a, a, a landing page like this and remember all our sites if i look at our our um, e-learning site this is also so this entire site is built using is built using Google, Google Sites, and you can see you can really customize the look and the feel of the thing to fit what you want it to, to be. I didn't go into these pages and how to add different pages because the whole principle that we looked at today was how to build one single content landing page that can get you access to different pages. Um, I hope that I see you in our last session for the year that we're going to be having the one on Wakelet and how we can use Wakelet to create web quests. It really is it's an interesting one to get your thoughts going. And remember, all that we're trying to do in these four sessions that we're having now with our tech hours is to kind of plant the seed, get the idea of how I can extend what I'm doing and change the way that I'm I'm, I'm getting, getting across to my learners. And I think being able to get content across easily is a very, very important step in the process of integrating technology into, the, into your teaching practice. <clears throat> I'm glad if your thoughts are jogging, Renee. Next week in our um, web quest one, we're really going to send them for a run. So we are just to keep uh, just one last thing. I want to quick advertisement here. We have added a couple of new videos on YouTube recently, and we are developing one or two new courses here that we'll try and have up um, 
before the end of the year. So please go have a look at, at our website and some of the courses that are on here. There is one on, we on WebQuest, and that's kind of the one that we will be presenting next week. So um, you're welcome to go have a look at, at, at what we're going to be talking about before and next week. But um, with that, I'm going to say thank you very much, colleagues, and thank you for, for your time. I really hope this has been a fruitful session. And as always, you're welcome to contact me um, if there are further questions, if you are trying to implement some of these ideas and you get stuck somewhere, really, please, um, we, we are always happy and happy and willing to help.